now from Capitol Hill, we've got Democratic Senator from Virginia and member of the Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Tim Kaine, later today. Secretary of State John Kerry has gone before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in a hearing on the authorization for use of military force against ISIS. Mike Barnacle. Senator, I understand the concept and I appreciate the concept, but how do you declare war or, de or whatever on an ideology, not a military group? And ISIS is basically an ideology. Well, Mike, look, it, it, it is trickier. This isn't traditional nation states, but you know, there is history. When Thomas Jefferson was president, we had to declare military action against the Barbary Coast Pirates, which was sort of a, the terrorist organization of the day. They were connected to some sultanates in North Africa. So we have a history, and this is the way we do it. We don't let presidents start unilateral military action without congressional vote. I'm frustrated that we're now more than four months into a war. That's what the administration calls it, 1,100 airstrikes, 1,500 combat advisors there, another 1,500 coming, three deaths in Operation Inherent Resolve of American troops, over a billion dollars spent, but there's been a conspiracy of silence about it here on the Hill. We haven't yeah. had a committee vote or a floor vote, and that's what we're going to move to today and tomorrow. You brought up pirates. Let's go to Willie Guys. <laughs> Thank Barbary pirates. Barbary pirates. Yeah. I mean, this is our, let's go to the our Barbary, Barbary, Pirates Pirates let's go to our Barbary yeah. pirate yeah. desk <laughs> and <laughs> Willie Guys. Senator, I have to confess, I didn't think we were going to have Barbary Pirates reference at this early in the morning. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you, though, about this argument that's been made that the authorization from 2002, 3, and 4 extends to today, and that is to fight terrorism in general under that umbrella argument. What do you make of that case? Willie, I think it is such a weak argument. Um, there were two authorizations, one done right after 9-11, September 1401, and one done with respect to Iraq. And if you look at the wording of the two authorizations, the intent of the two authorizations, what members of Congress thought about it when they voted, but especially what President Obama has said about both authorizations since he's been president, it's clear that the authorizations don't cover this war against ISIL. And that's why it is so important for Congress not to abdicate its job as it's been doing for the last few months, not to adjourn and go home for Christmas on the 11th of December while we have people fighting overseas and risking their lives. We've got to have this debate and have this vote. Al Hunt. Yes, Senator, uh, how open-ended would you like to see a new authorization and how or how tailored should it be? You know, the, uh, I filed a draft authorization, Al, uh, in September after the president spoke to the nation on the 10th, basically tracking what he told the American public. Actions in Iraq and Syria, an airstrike campaign, strict limitations on no ground combat troops with a few key exceptions. We put a sunset clause in our authorization, and I think you'll see uh, the committee embrace one as we mark this up on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, but I do support the notion that this should not be a ground campaign. We should be providing airstrikes to support the ground efforts of the Iraqi military, the Kurdish Peshmerga, uh, vetted elements of the Syrian opposition. But there's no amount of American ground troops that can beat extremism in a region that won't police its own extremism. Senator Nicole Wallace, do you think that the men and women of the military appreciate that you're taking this up, or do you think it looks like maybe politics has interfered and, and people are looking for some political cover? What do you, what do you th where do you think they stand? I know you have a lot well, of constituents in the military. Yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you, in Virginia, Nicole, as you know, we are as militarily connected as any state in the country. One in nine Virginians is a veteran. We've got a huge active duty population, DOD civilians, DOD contractors. Since I started banging on the White House in June about this, I wrote an op-ed in June saying, don't start a war against ISIL without Congress. I have gotten uniform uh, praise from my own state's residents, and especially those who are connected with the military. And here's why. They don't think we should ask our servicemen and women to risk their lives if Congress is not willing to have a debate and put their thumbprint on this and say, this is in the national interest. If we won't do that, it's not moral to ask people to risk their lives to carry out a mission. Senator, uh, according to the logic of the authorization, why not extend it and include the Taliban? Um, well, you know, Mike, that's actually a really uh, good question. The Taliban is currently covered uh, by all accounts by the 2001 authorization that Willie mentioned earlier. My authorization would, would uh, repeal the Iraq 02 authorization, but the 01 authorization that clearly um, uh, covers actions against the Taliban uh, is, is still live because of the uh, one authorization. Now, we're working with the White House to take that authorization, which has no geographic limit, uh, no time limitation. We're working right. with the White House to maybe try to refine that a bit, but
but that is a separate issue. All right, Senator Tim Kaine, we really appreciate you being with us. All right, Good thank luck you today guys. on the Hill.